Christian greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world, more particularly to all Shepherd's Rod believers, and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. This is episode number two on the subject entitled, Where is the Hope of the World? Now, let us read again to us our page 100 and 101. It says, Just such ignorance of God's word in the days of Noah brought the world to its destruction by water. A similar wicked condition reduced to ashes the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. If in the days of Christ, just such hypocrisy under the appearance of virtue required the life of the Son of God to preserve the world from destruction, what would the outcome be at this present time? God cannot destroy the world, for He has a multitude to save. He has no other son for a gift to the church, for Christ is the only begotten Son of God. If God's ideal is to bless the world through the medium of His church on earth, and they to whom the gospel for the world is committed have left the ship and are serving the devil in the person of themselves, where is the hope of the world? The only answer that can be given is, Woe to the sinners in Zion! God will gather his sheep. He will have a church. But what will be the reward of those who were instructed to feed the lambs and are feeding themselves? Christ, who sees the end from the beginning, and with his all-seeing eye, Focus on present-day conditions has said. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day, when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, with the heads of the beasts. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 24, verse 45 to verse 51. Remember, in 2 SR, page 127, let us read a statement. The Grecians have never been anything but transgressors. Therefore, the reference can be applied only to the Jewish nation, at which time the once favored people of God would have exceeded any previous record of both moral and spiritual corruption. The Jewish nation reached that condition at the time of the ascendancy of Rome and the first advent. Of Christ. So here the shepherd's rod is plainly telling us that at the close of the Old Testament dispensation, the Jewish nation reached to that full apostasy. The production in Daniel chapter 8 verse 20 to verse 23 saying that when the transgressors are come to the full, meaning when the transgressors are come to the full apostasy, then the king of first countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And the shepherd's rod made it so plain that the transgressors mentioned in Daniel 8 verse 20 to verse 23 is pointing to the Jewish nation. The once favored people of God would have exceeded any previous record of both moral and spiritual corruption. And accordingly, in 2 SR page 100, that in the days of Christ, just such hypocrisy under the appearance of virtue required the life of the Son of God to preserve the world from destruction. So the that generation, brothers and sisters, although both in uh, moral and spiritual corruption, there is no nations that exceed the record of the Jewish nation. But because of the gift of the Son of the living God, that generation 
have been preserved from destruction. Now, in 2 Asar, page 95, it says, I would like to read a statement. In Luther's day, conditions were as bad as when the church crucified Christ. If this generation is more wicked than any before, what would immunize the church from just such apostasy? But I would like to quote the statement here in 2 Asar, page 95, that in reality, in the last generation of men, in that generation, it is even more wicked than the previous generation. But the shepherd's rod plainly told us that God has no other son for a gift to the church. According to 2 Asar page 100, for Christ is the only begotten son of God, brothers and sisters. So what does it mean? Since there is no other son of God that God the Father can offer to the world to preserve from its destruction. In 2 Asar page 69, it says, I would like to read the statement, 2 Asar page 69, Just such and apostasy had gripped the world in the days of Noah, and its wickedness made the continuation of the world impossible. Therefore, necessity for the good of mankind brought about the flood. The terrible apostasy of the Jews made an avoidable another disaster similar to the dreadful deluge as God could not overthrow the world by water the second time and yet keep his never failing promise to his faithful servant Noah. He sent his son to die in the world's stead. Therefore the world perish not because of the supreme sacrifice of the Son of God. And the world exists today because Christ arose from the dead. Now I would like to apply the statement, the world exists today because Christ arose from the dead. That is pointing to the generation by which that generation are destined for grave and resurrection. But concerning the last generation of men, as we already read here in 2 Asar 100, the only way that God's people could be able to escape such oncoming destruction is to have that sufficient light that had been bestowed by God to our generation. It says here in 2 Asar page 100, but one may say, if God could save others with less light, why should he give us more light? Of the many reasons, we shall comment on only two. By increased light on the word of God, God is able to save a multitude instead of a few. The second reason is, as the last part of the church will be translated instead of resurrected, we need sufficient light to prepare us to meet God and immortal beings. And we know that that occurrence was illustrated in the vision of Ezekiel. And uh, to us are page 295, I would like to read this statement. Note that the reason the waters are healed is because they are brought forth into the sea. If the mighty river represents the saints, it says, the saints from the earth, then the sea must be a symbol of the sinless worlds, inhabitants in the universe of God. As the river is brought into the sea, it denotes that the saints shall come in contact with the eternal nations who know not sin and being brought forth we must be healed before we meet each other the facts of this symbol prove that this is the last section of God's church so the same statement in 2 Asar page 100 it says the last part of the church this is the last section of God's church the church that shall be translated without tasting that get ready get ready get ready we are now standing on the wings of eternity life that shall never cease wings now standing on the wings of eternity life that shall never cease now let us focus brothers and sisters to the statement in to us our page 100 and 101 saying if god's ideal is to bless the world through the medium of his church on earth so that is god's ideal or god's program brothers and sisters, that God would bless the world through the medium of his church on earth. And then it says, And they to whom the gospel for the world is committed have left the ship and are serving the devil in the persons of themselves. The question is, where is the hope of the world? So that is very important to have a definite answer of this absolute question. Or in other words, brothers and sisters, since God's ideal is to bless the world through the medium of His church on earth, and that people by which supposed to be, they will be the one to rescue the world 
But it so happened that they had been defeated by the devil. And instead of leading the sheep to eternal life, they were leading God's people to worship the devil according to this reading. Now, I would like to read to you another statement in the shepherd's word. Here in answerer number 3, let us read this statement. It says here, brothers and sisters, page 30. Answerer number 3, page 30. It says, So very plainly, the word of God cannot be rightly interpreted privately without the aid of inspiration. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. And then it says, Any who does attempt to interpret the messages which the Lord sends to them, will find themselves serving Satan instead of serving Christ and will surely cause both themselves and their followers to make shepherd of faith. Now the statement is very plain that any who does attempt to interpret the messages which the Lord sends to them. Now for example, in 1888, God sent message to the Seventh day Adventist Church. And 100%, we also fully believe that in 1930, God sent messages to his people. Now, since the writer at this time were already dead, then are we allowed individually that we could interpret the shepherd's rod in our own initiative? And secondly, does the shepherd's rod teach us, brothers and sisters, that each of us has an absolute authority to interpret the shepherd's rod publications? Here, the voice of inspiration is plain detailing. In answerer number 3, page 30, that the only way that we could be able to rightly interpret the Word of God is through the aid of inspiration. Now, any who does attempt to interpret, I would like to apply this to the Shepherd's Rod publications. Any who does attempt to interpret the Shepherd's Rod messages which the Lord sends to them without the aid of inspiration will find themselves serving Satan instead of serving Christ and will surely cause both themselves and their followers to make shepherd of faith. So this statement in answerer number 3, page 30, brothers and sisters, the statement given by 2SR page 100 and 101, then the people are leading the people to serve the devil in what way? That is the result, the consequence of interpreting the word of God privately without the aid of inspiration. Now, let us go to another angle in our study, brothers and sisters, and connect the statement in. 2SR page 100 and 101. Now, first of all, in 2SR page 266, it says, Only by the gospel proclamation through that spiritual house can God save his people. Uh, 2SR 266, it says, Only by the gospel proclamation through that spiritual house can God save his people. Now, in the statement in 1SR 255 saying, In view of this unrushing torrent of apostasy heeded by misled spiritual guides, in my estimation, the new part B of Revelation 13 verse 1 to 3 has met a most striking fulfillment of symbolical prophecy. All the world wandered after the beast. The world in general has always been after the beast. For this reason, the world is in need of the gospel. But when God makes the statement, all the world wandered after the beast, then it must be that those to whom God has given great light have partaken of the spirit of the world, thus fulfilling the prophecy. 2SR, 1SR 255 So, since the world in, in general has always been after the beast, and the shepherd says, for this reason, the world needed the gospel because it is only by the gospel proclamation to that spiritual house that can God save his people to SR 266. Therefore, in order to save the world, they needed the gospel according to this reading. But the shepherds were declared clearly, but when God made a statement, all the world wandered after the beast. It indicates that even those by which unto them was committed the gospel 
was defeated by the devil. And instead to save the world, brothers and sisters, they were leading the church to serve the devil in the persons of themselves. That is the statement in 2 Asar page 100 and 101. Now concerning the question, it says, where is the hope of the world? First of all, I would like to read White House Recruiter on page, let's read a statement here. A White House Recruiter. And it's a very important statement given by the Shepherd's Rod, brothers and sisters. And the Shepherd's Rod, let's read page 7. It says here, Our country and the whole world, of course the country mentioned here is United States of America. White House Recruiter, page 7. Our country and the whole world need the church, they needed the church, and God is waiting for her members, both laity and ministry, to arise and shine. White House Recruiter, page 7. So what they needed is the church because the gospel is committed by God to the church. According to a reading in 2SR 266. Now, I would like to read to you the statement in Answerer number 1 on page, let's read the statement given by the Voice of Inspiration. Page 67, it says, Thus we see that while Satan has not been able to overthrow every individual member, he has, though, been able to overthrow every movement to date. And he says, the 11th hour movement, being the very last, is consequently in the greatest danger of all. But what urgency then? That we keep our eyes wide open, lest we to fall. This movement, however, being the last gospel effort, must give power and force to the third angel's message, enlighten the earth with his glory. Revelation 18 verse 1. It must triumph, though every movement before it has failed. Answer error number 1, page 67. I think the statement is not difficult to understand. That all movements before the 11th hour movement, it has failed. Now, when does the 11th hour movement did exist? But as far as the Bible and the Shepherd's Rod is thus concerned, only the 11th hour movement that will not be defeated by the devil. Now, I would like to read again to SR. Here in 2SR on page 95, let's read the statement. The seven heads are to symbolically point out these high places ruled by unsanctified leaders who have attempted to mix the sacred with the common and refuse to hear the word of the Lord. The biblical number seven denotes completeness, naturally would comprise all Christendom at the time the prophetic truth is made known. Such apostasy is not a strange thing in the history of God's people. For time and again, the church has fallen under a satanic flood. In Luther's day, conditions were as bad as when the church crucified Christ. If this generation is more wicked than any before, what would immunize the church from just such an apostasy? It is accepted by most Bible students that prophecies of this nature are understood only when the prophetic object in view is fully developed. Therefore, this is the time of which the symbols speak. However, there is another angle to this by which we shall prove that the facts presented are true. Now, the focal point in this reading, in 2SR page 95, brothers and sisters, that in Christ's day, in reality, if that generation is wicked, the generation in the days of Martin Luther is even more wicked. But the Shepherd's Rod plainly told us that in our generation, in the last generation, in reality, it is even more wicked, brothers and sisters. And the uppermost question is that, if that is the case, what would immunize the church from just sons apostasy? Is there any immunization? And I think there will be no dispute to the fact that the Seventh-day Adventist church had been apostatized. But how about the Bidian? Are, they, are not they in apostasy at this present time? Now, let us now analyze all the statements that had been given by the Shepherd's Rod publications. Now, since the Shepherd's Rod declared clearly in Answerer number 1, page 67, that all the movements prior to the 11th hour movement have failed, or meaning it had been defeated by the devil. Now, in 2SR, page 97, let us read uh, 
uh, the statement, brothers and sisters, and let's ponder deeply. It says, By the divinely called movement, and aided by the writings of the spur prophecy, God's intention was to keep the deadly one on the head. That is the intention of God, to keep the deadly one on the head. And the only one that could be able to carry out God's intention is through the divinely called movement and aided by the writings of the spirit of prophecy. And then it says, But the prophetic word of God says his deadly one was healed. Since God's holy word declares that the wound was healed, and as the prophecy cannot be broken, it is positive that the wound is healed. But if Protestantism says, but if Protestantism, by obedience to God's word, is what inflicted the wound, then true Protestantism only can keep the painful sore on the head. If the wound is healed, then it is evident that they to whom God had committed the message for a perishing world had been defeated in the same manner as every movement since the world began. It is a most wonderful thing to note how the old enemy has succeeded in defiling the church in every age through its leadership. The highest human intellect has been continually led into error and thus have served Satan to their own downfall. Will God's people never profit by these historical and biblical facts? Are not these things written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come? God by his holy word commands, Seize ye per man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Isaiah 2 verse 22 let us analyze closely this long reading, brothers and sisters. First of all, since it was written in the Bible, in the Word of God, in the book of Revelation, that the wound is healed, then it is positive that the wound is healed. And the spiritual side of that predicted event that the wound is healed is to indicate that they to whom the gospel had been committed has been defeated by the devil. That is very plain, brothers and sisters. And it says, in the same manner as every movement since the world began. What does it mean by in the same manner? I would like to read this reading in 1SR. Let us read 1SR page statement here in page 220. It says, It would be of interest to know how perfectly God has portrayed our world by symbols. While the six Protestants and the one Catholic head make the biblical number seven, meaning all Christendom. God has the same prophecy confirmed by the prophet Ezekiel and carried out by the reformers since Luther's time, namely Luther, Knox, Wesley, Campbell, Miller, and Sister White. These godly men sacrifice all in an effort to lead God's church back to her standard of purity. But as the shrewd enemy succeeded to pull down the first, he proceeded to use the same method to the last. Now the statement that the devil had been able to pull down the first, or in other words, to, to apostasize, apostatize, because the statement pull down is pointing to the production in 2 Thessalonians. There must be a pulling away first in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But I would like to emphasize the statement that the same method the devil employed to pull down the first down to the last. What method? I think the method mentioned here is the same with the statement in 2SR page 97 saying that the, the people of God had been defeated in the same manner as every movement since the world began. So the statement, the same manner, is synonymous to the statement, the same method. Now, let us read answerer number one. Here in answerer number one, page 65, it says here, answerer number one on page 65, it says, brothers and sisters, beginning from page 64, being determined, though, to bring the reformation to now, Satan has from its beginning constantly worked to cause every church member to reveal in private interpretation of the scriptures and in extra biblical theories. Consequently, Protestantism today finds itself following not merely in the way of the uninspired Bible interpretations of one man, but in the ways of the uninspired interpretation of thousands of men. And the result is that Christian them themes with schism and confusion unrivaled in history. Evidence that the great work of the founding fathers of the Protestant Reformation 
has been perverted and turned into an undermining force for the prostration of God's special design for the church today. What is God's special design? We already read that God's purpose with such reformation is to bring God's people into one accord. According to 2TG, I would like to read again that statement in 2TG. Here in 2TG number 39, it says on page 9, this is the statement given by the shepherd's rod. It says, brothers and sisters, The Christian church, though did not long continue in grace, but it too in time fell even lower than the Jewish church. Necessarily, something had to be done for her also if any her members were to be made free, and if God was still to have a church on earth. Unquestionably, this something was none other than the Protestant Reformation. But since we all know that the Reformation has not yet accomplished its divinely appointed purpose, has not reached the, the accord and faith which the church enjoyed on the day of Pentecost, it is obvious that another attempt of revival and reformation is an absolute necessity. So in this reading, in 2 TJ 39, page 9, the divinely appointed purpose of our God, when God launched the reformation, is to bring God's people into one accord. That is the purpose of God, brothers and sisters. But Satan is determined to bring reformation to note. How? According to this reading, in answer to page 64 and page 65, by causing every church member to reveal in private interpretation. The word reveal meaning to have pleasure. And they are not mindful with the word of God because there is a prohibition when it comes to the prophecy, brothers and sisters. And since it is God who will be the one to bestow such gift to such individual, then we need to wait the appointed time, brothers and sisters. That was the shepherds that teaches that we need to wait the arrival of inspiration. The arrival of the spirit of truth, whose teaching is called inspiration. In 2 Symbolic Code, number 12, page 6, it says, Moreover, John 14, verse 26, does not say that we can, of ourselves, discover the hidden truths of the Bible. 2 Symbolic Code, number 12, page 6, But on the contrary, that we should wait for the spirit of truth to come to teach us, which teaching is called inspiration. 2 Symbolic Code, number 12, page 6, Look at the history of the seven day Adventist Church. When Sister White died in 1915, and since they were so eager to study the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, the result is that instead of waiting the arrival of inspiration in 1930, they began to engage in private interpretation and using uninspired books, or in other words, outside sources, the thoughts of Daniel and Revelation. Although it was written by Uriah Smith, but in reality, the original writer are Kett and Barnes. They are Protestants. And the result was the Seventh-day Adventist Church had been divided. And how about us among the media? Now here, brothers and sisters, I would like to read again. It says in Answerer number 1, page 65, Thus we see that the Reformation, which originally under the direction of inspired men, the same statement in 1 SR 220, if you look at the statement in 1 SR 220, it says, brothers and sisters, this godly men, Luther, Knox, Wesley, Campbell, Miller, and Sister White sacrifice all in an effort to lead God's church back to her standard of purity. 1 SR page 220. But what happened when they died or after they died? This is what happened in answerer number 1 page 65. It says here, brothers and sisters, Thus we see that the reformation which originally under the direction of inspired men lifted the church out of one morass, later under the direction of uninspired men, flung her into another wherein she has been plundering ever since. And unless we let the truth extricate us from this fatal vague of confusion, we cannot defeat the enemy of inspiration in his tireless and powerful efforts to pervert the implements of our salvation into weapons for our destruction. And the best example that I could use is the Jewish people. Brothers and sisters, I would like to read to you two passages. First, in timely greetings. 1 TG. It says here how the enemy of inspiration in his tireless and powerful efforts 
brothers and sisters, he pervert the implements of our salvation into uh, weapons of destruction, brothers and sisters. And as I've said, I think the best example is the Jewish nation. Now, I would like to read to you first 1 TG number 15, page 6. It says, of Moses' writings, the Jews made a mighty weapon against Christ and the prophets of that day. You see, brothers and sisters, would you think the writings of Moses had been written to become a mighty weapon against Jesus Christ, against the apostles, and against all the prophets that followed after Moses? That's what happened when Moses died. The writings of Moses instead and implements as a weapon for our salvation, it had been perverted by Satan to become weapons and implements to our destruction. Now here's another statement, 2 TG number 24, page 20. Let us consider another example, this one in Jesus' time. The Jews in his time had even greater faith in the scriptures than any before. With the scriptures, they accused, tried, and crucified the Lord. You see, brothers and sisters, what happened to the scriptures? The Old Testament scriptures, instead of a weapon as an implement for our salvation, it had been perverted to become a weapon to implement of such destruction. Because of that scriptures, they accused and tried. And according to their understanding, they need to kill the Messiah. And that is why it reminds me here in the old symbolic code. It says here, brothers and sisters, let's read a statement in the old symbolic code on for symbolic code number 10 to 12, page 3. It says, for an example, beginning in the statement, in the following paragraph, we will endeavor to prove in the following paragraph, we will endeavor to prove that the church of today is repeating the mistakes which the church of the past committed. So, only repeating. Because the statement, Satan used the same method and all the churches, all the movements had been defeated by the devil except the 11th hour movement. And it says, for an example, as the Pharisees of old rejected the inspired interpretation of the scriptures, and as they feared that the common people might see their mistakes, they killed the prophets to silence them. Consequently, they were left in a spiritual darkness, and as they privately, without inspiration, interpreted the scriptures, they misunderstood and misapplied even the most simple portions of the word of God with the result that they crucified the very one for whom they had expended millions of dollars in sacrifices and served hundreds of years in ceremonial services. That is very plain, brothers and sisters. Now, going back to answer number one, page 65, let us connect this statement in the old symbolic code. Let me read to you this statement. It says here, and I think it is very plain, three symbolic code, 11 to 12, page 10. It says, Moreover, after the death of its reformer, the churches which they founded fell into the hands of foolish shepherds who were reaching out after numbers rather than after real converts. Thus, as they flooded the churches with wordlings, they caused her to backslide after its former its forward step with the consequence that the Lord has had to shift the responsibilities from the old leadership to a new one in its call of reformation. Three symbolic code, 11 to 12, page 10. I think this statement is not difficult to understand because the word it's meaning all of them. That when the founder of that movement died, there is no such immunization. Otherwise, brothers and sisters, the parable of Jesus Christ is in gross mistake because Jesus Christ says that when the servant died, Satan came in and saw the tears. That is very plain in Matthew 13, verse 24. Now, I would like to read the example given here in, in the Shepherd's Rod publications. First, track number four, page 20, it says, In the Christian era, 
the church started out in an even more advantageous spiritual condition than in the Jewish era. Besides, she could have profited by the example of the fallen Jews. But as the verses just quoted reveal, she utterly failed to do so. Instead, as with the passing of Joshua, the Jews began to depart from their God. So with the passing of the apostles, the Christians drifted likewise in lowering the Christian standard and exalting the pagan the church played the harlot with the heathen. In this way, conceiving and bringing forth her so-called converts, she had done shamefully, said the Lord. For she said, I will go after my lovers and give that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Track number 4, page 20 and page 21. So the statement, after the passing of Joshua and also after the passing of the apostle. Or in other words, after the death of its heavenly confounder. It was revealed through the parable of Jesus Christ that after the servant is or during the time when the servant is sleeping. Which represented by the time when the servants were already dead and lying unconscious in their graves. Here in track number 3, page 60 and page 61, it says, The evil of allowing the devil freely to sow the tales among the wheat has existed in the Christian church since the passing of the apostles. 100% when the post apostles were still alive, the devil is already sowing his tales. But the fact is, it is immediately uprooted. But when all the apostles died, brothers and sisters, the people allowed the devil freely. And here in page 61, it says, As the period since the passing of the apostles has been the wheat and tear growing time, and as moreover the Laodicean church is the last of the seven sections of the Christian church in which are commingled the wheat and the tears, we must learn the answer to the question, which is the Laodicean church. But I would like to focus first to our study, how the old enemy pulled down all the movements, brothers and sisters, by which he uses the same method. In that statement, in 1SR 220, and synonymously in 2SR page 97, saying in the same manner, and that is according to the Shepherd's Red publications in the Jewish nation after the passing of Joshua, that is the first candlestick in Revelation 11 verse 3, and in the Apostolic Church after the passing of the Apostles, then the same method after the passing of Luther, Knox, Wesley, Campbell, Miller, and White. Now we have the this day organization. What thing that would immunize the Davidian that the Davidian will not be in apostasy when the heavenly cold founder experienced death? Is there any such immunization that had been predicted in the Bible? My dear brothers and sisters, now for example, the the statement in 1 TG number 10, page 18. I would like to read this reading. The Bible contains the complete plan of salvation for all humanity. How do I know this? I know it because its story begins with creation and ends with the earth made new. Between the first and the last pages of the Bible, then lies the complete formula for man's salvation and redemption. And if such revival and reformation as her invasion is to take place in the world between those two events, creation and the new earth, then the material and example of such hour must be found somewhere in the pages of the Bible. Now, this is the question, very serious question, brothers and sisters, where we could find in the Bible that such movement had never been apostatized, remained pure, even though the founder of that movement experienced death. Or in other words, after that heavenly called founder died, that such movement remained intact, brothers and sisters, and never been apostatized. Contrarywise, it is opposite to what Jesus Christ teach in his parable. That is very plain, brothers and sisters. I remember the statement used by the shepherd's rod that the church had been infiltrated. I think that is in track number four, brothers and sisters. It says here on page 22 in track number four. Had the early Christian church continued in her first love for the salvation of souls and the advancement of the kingdom of Christ rather than for enlarging her membership, the enemy's operatives, the tares could never have infiltrated into her ranks. You see, the tares could never have infiltrated into her ranks. But first of all, brothers and sisters, 
I would like to emphasize uh, that statement in verse in Evangelism, page 196, saying prophecy is the foundation of our faith. And also the statement in Prophets and Kings, it says here, uh, the same with Daniel, brothers and sisters, in page 554, Prophets and Kings, it says, with faith founded on the sure word of prophecy. So I would like to emphasize that statement, with faith founded on the sure word of prophecy. Why is it that it is called sure word of prophecy? Because Bethel says prophecy never fails to tell the truth. Here in track number 12, it says that prophecy never fails to tell the truth. Track number 12 on page 57. Thus, the more sure word of prophecy which never fails to tell the truth. You see, the more sure word of prophecy never fails to tell the truth. Or in other words, we need to have an absolute faith what the prophecy are telling us. Now, the shepherd's rod, I fully believe that it is the testimony of Jesus. And since the testimony of Jesus is a true witness, it never tell a lie. And this testimony is plainly telling us in answer error number one, page 67, that of all the movement, only the 11th hour movement will not be defeated by the devil. Because it says that the 11th hour movement being the very last, then I would like to go to the portion, it must triumph though every movement before it has failed. It is not difficult to understand that all the movements prior to the 11th hour movement, it has failed. Failed to what? To carry out God's purpose and God's intention. All of them failed. Now, for example, brothers and sisters, here in answerer number 1, page 70, I would like to read, it says, In varying ways, the fatal weakness which has characterized every movement from that of Israel to that of Laodicea, you see, the statement is every movement, brothers and sisters, and it says, has been in laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. What, what are those dead works? I think um, one of the best that explain dead works is the writings of Alonso Jones, brothers and sisters. And although I could no longer remember, I think it is in Consecrated Way to Christian Perfection, by which Alonso Jones says, what are those dead works? And then he emphasized clearly, brothers and sisters, what does it mean by that statement recorded in the epistle of Apostle Paul in Hebrews? Because it found in the book of Hebrews, saying dead works and that is in a consecrated way to christian perfection page 78 it says what are dead works uh, let us read first in the bible and then go back to the statement in answer it. here in the bible hebrews chapter i think is it chapter 9 by which apostle paul used the term dead works and then connect to to the shepherd's rod publications brothers and sisters to have a clear understanding so let us read it says Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 Forge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God So I would like to read again Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 The portion says Forge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 Now let us go back to the consecrated way to Christian perfection In page 78 it says What are dead works? Death itself is the consequence of sin. Dead works, therefore, are works that have sin in them. You see, brothers and sisters? And the example given is found in the Bible itself because the, the Jewish people, they continually observed the Sabbath. They were very strict on observing the Sabbath. And according to them, they were obeying all the commandments of God. But they killed the Messiah. They crucified the Savior. My dear brothers and sisters, or in other words, brothers and sisters, dead works must be pointing to the people by which they were still obeying the commandments of God while in reality, they continually reject the present truth. Now, for example, here in answerer number four, let me read to you here in answerer number four on page, page 13 and page 14. There is no Bible sanctification for those who cast a part of the truth behind them. For this work cannot go in the heart while the light on any part of the truth is rejected or neglected. 
the sanctified soul will not be content to remain in ignorance but will desire to walk in the light and to seek for greater light. As a miner digs for gold and silver, so the follower of Christ will seek for truth as for hidden treasures and will press from light to a greater light. Even ever increasing in knowledge, he will continually grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. Many do not exemplify the truth in their lives. They have special exercises upon sanctification, yet cast the word of God behind them. They pray sanctification, sing sanctification, and sa shout sanctification. The present truth, which is the channel, so the only channel to arrive such sanctification is not regarded, but is trampled underfoot. Men may cry holiness, holiness, sanctification, sanctification, consecration, consecration, and yet know no more by experience of what they thought than the sinner with his corrupt propensities. God will soon tear off this whitewashed garb of prophecy sanctification which some who are carnally minded have thrown around them to hide the deformity of the soul. Testimonies Volume 1 page 338 and 336. So the only channel that we could arrive such sanctification brothers and sisters is the present truth. Now going back again in answer number one on page 70 let us read again it says in varying ways the fatal weakness which has characterized every movement from that of Israel to that of Laodicea has been in laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. What is dead works? For example, brothers and sisters, the statement here in answer error number one, page 67, it says, Thus we see that while Satan has not been able to overthrow every individual member, he has though been able to overthrow every movement to date. What does it mean, brothers and sisters, that that movement had been already overthrown by the devil? For example, the Lutherans. When Luther died, they stopped to the teaching by which Luther teach them, and they could no longer advance. Then that movement, brothers and sisters, have been defeated by the devil. It says, been able to overthrow every movement to date. And they no longer updated, brothers and sisters. And the same statement here, it says in page 70, in answerer number one, and what is still more basic and more urgently to the point is that its movement alike failed to progress from one message to the next and to go on to reach its final goal of transcendental attainments in divine knowledge. Instead, it fell from the heights of its own early rich experience back down to spiritual poverty because it failed to keep pace with the truth. It's divinely called movement. There is no dispute to the fact that the, this the organization that had been raised from 1930 to 1955 is a divinely called movement. But the word is all of them by which such divinely called movement, the heavenly called founder died. It says, its divinely called movement came to a standstill. The Bidyan could no longer move forward. They stop where Bitti Hotep stopped. Brothers and sisters, Bitti Hotep is not the author of truth. Look at the statement here in the Great Controversy. Let me read to you. The Great Controversy. This is the statement given by the Spirit of Prophecy. And, and, and ponder deeply, brothers and sisters, the statement given by uh, the voice of inspiration. And it is very plain. The, it seems to that people in the days of Martin Luther that it is Martin Luther which is the author of truth. But it is not Luther. Let us read here in the Great Controversy, page 170. It says, As men rejoice in the freedom which the truth brings them, they are inclined to extol those whom God has employed to break the chains of error and superstition. Satan seeks to divert men's thoughts and affections from God and to fix them upon human agencies. He leaves them to honor the mere instrument and to ignore the hand that directs all the events of providence. Too often, religious leaders who are thus praised and reverenced lost sight of their dependence upon God and are led to trust in themselves. As a result, they seek to control the minds and consciences of the people who are disposed to look to them for guidance instead of looking to the word of God. The work of reform is often retarded because of this spirit indulged by its supporters. From this danger, God would guard the cause of the reformation. 
he desired that work to receive not the impress of man but that of God. The eyes of men had been turned to Luther as the expounder of the truth. He was removed that all eyes might be directed to the eternal author of truth. You see brothers and sisters? And that's why maybe the Bidyan also, their eyes have been focused to Biti Hotep. That it seems Biti Hotep is the author of truth, no? The author of truth is God, and not Biti Hotep. And here in 2TG number 27, let me read to you, brothers and sisters, 2TG 27, page 7, page 9, and page 10. It says, This side choosing was ruining the Christians in false day, and it is ruining them in our day. That is, people are setting their affections on men who bring them the knowledge of the gospel rather than on the one who sends them with the gospel. And worse than this is the fact that multitude are setting their affections even on men who have not a spark of inspiration, men who are not sent by God at all, but who are running loose of their own accord. Who are they? Uninspired men. They set their affection to the dead prophet and then set their affections to the living ones which uninspired, which is not sent by God at all. And then it says, brothers and sisters, I would like to read a statement. The Christian life is, as it were, a building under construction. One messenger of God lays the foundation and another builds thereupon. Thus to no one messenger is given all the material with which to build. Consequently, if anyone should choose to give heed to this or to that messenger instead to God and to all his servants as he himself sends them, as he himself sends them one after another, that one will certainly be left with insufficient building material and consequently without the acquirements which he needs to have at the coming of the Lord. And in page 9 it says, Since the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, we'd better have nothing to do with it, and quit taking sides, one for Luther, another for Weasley, still another for Campbell, or White, or maybe as well as Bitty Hotep. But we had better stand with the Lord and accept all the truths from all his servants God chooses to send. Otherwise, when we arrive at the door, he will have to say to us, Depart from me, I never know you. And it says here, To glory in men, whether it be in self or in another, is to cheat yourself of everything. Take for example the Jews. They were determined to be of Moses. And as they saw it, to accept the prophets or even Christ, to them it meant to give up Moses. As a result, rather than all things being theirs, they lost everything, even Moses. And where are they today? The wood, hay, and stubble, which they piled upon the structure of truth after Moses left them, has long been swept away by the fire of truth, the hood. Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, to repeat again, the present truth lesson is that the original author of the truth is God himself, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, never die. The messenger might die, but the author of truth never die. And we will stand in reality, I fully believe this reading, brothers and sisters, that according to the great controversy, and it is really the reality, it says here in the great controversy 291, For my part, I cannot sufficiently bewail the condition of the Reformed Church who are come to a period in religion and will go at present no further than the instruments of their reformation. The Lutherans cannot be drawn to go beyond what Luther saw, and the Calvinists, you see, stick fast where they were left by that great man of God, who yet saw not all things. This is a misery much to be lamented, for though they were burning and shining lights in their time, yet they penetrated not into the whole counsel of God. But were they now living, would be as willing to embrace further light as that which they first received. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, viewing and listening this program and hoping that you will follow episode by episode. This is a very important subject to have a definite answer of that question. Where is the hope of the world? And hoping that God would bless you and would help you as we continue to study this very important subject. Thank you very much and have a wonderful